The specific gravity of the electrolyte of your batteries is critical to your success with a solar system. Let's take a look at how to measure and track it. Before you begin measuring the specific gravity of your batteries, you want to start a log. Get a notebook, an Excel spreadsheet, whatever. This is so that you can keep track of the specific gravity readings for each cell in your battery bank. This will allow you to, over time, see the progression of the life cycle of your batteries and predict their failure. This will allow you to purchase new batteries before your battery bank fails completely. What you want to do there is assign each battery a number. I have 16 batteries in my battery bank. They're all numbered 1 through 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Each cell on each battery is given a letter designation, A, B, and C. So this first cell would be battery 1, cell A, 1A. So keep track of this on your spreadsheet. Also you want to keep track of the ambient air temperature, uh, but better is to record the actual temperature of the electrolyte or the battery case because the electrolyte will vary in density based on its temperature. If you don't have a hydrometer that compensates for temperature, you'll need to have this information to get accurate measurements of the specific gravity. Today I'm going to show you two tools. I have a traditional hydrometer here that you'd find at like an auto parts store looks kind of like a turkey baster and what you do here is you fill this up and the this piece inside here will float and where the water level crosses this scale is what the specific gravity measurement is. Now this particular design does not compensate for temperature uh, and while these cost six or seven dollars at an auto parts store and they work fine for getting relative measurements uh, if you really want to keep track of the actual specific gravity, you really want to pay close attention to the temperature of the electrolyte or you want to get a hydrometer that actually compensates for the temperature. And here's a popular one here. This one's called the Hydrovolt. It's produced by Midnight Solar. And for both of these hydrometers, I will put some links in the description where you can find and purchase these. Um, this particular unit here, the Hydrovolt, compensates for the temperature of the electrolyte, so you get a much more accurate reading. Now before I start showing you how to measure this on my batteries, I want to remind you that this battery bank is old and has been damaged due to poor maintenance. So the specific gravity readings I'm going to get on these batteries aren't that great. You really want to make these measurements um, after you've filled your batteries and then they're fully charged the next day because your specific gravity will rise up to its maximum as the charge level increases. So you want to make sure that your batteries are clean and I just kind of sprayed these off. Just make sure they're clean. There's no dust and dirt going to get inside the cells of your battery because if you get any dirt in there, you can't get it out. So just make sure it's not a terribly windy, dusty day and uh, that your cells, you've sprayed them off or something. So take the battery cap off and just set it aside. And you can look down inside here and see the water level in these cells that I'm going to need to add some water to these soon. Then you want to take your hydrometer. I'm first going to show you the hydrovolt here. And you want to squeeze the bulb, drop, the, drop it down into the electrolyte, and draw an entire bulb of electrolyte up in. And then lift it up so that it's level. And you can read here that it says my electrolyte level on this cell is 1.1 Four, zero. Now that is extremely, extremely low. Um, and that's because this, especially this battery, um, is in poor shape and it's not fully charged. So I'm going to also show you using the automotive type that you can get at just about any automotive store. 
squeeze the bulb, put it down into the electrolyte, and draw up a whole bulb full. Okay, this one is measuring 1.200. It's very hard to read these. This is why they're not terribly popular. Um, looks like 1.205. As you can see that the, the meniscus, the line there of the water, crosses just below the 1.220. Uh, mark, or 200 mark rather. And I'm getting different readings from this hydrometer, again because of the temperature difference in the electrolyte. When you're measuring this, the ideal measurement of a full battery will be in the green as you see on this meter and should measure 1.270 to 1.275 thereabouts. It actually varies um, based on the manufacturer because each manufacturer may put a slightly different strength of acid in their batteries when they manufacture them. So just make sure that you get a good read on each cell and record that information in your log along with the date to time, uh, the ambient air temperature, the temperature of the electrolyte. All this data, the more data you collect, the more accurate your information will be, obviously. When you're done using the hydrometer, you need to make sure to rinse it. Right now there is concentrated acid inside here and while the glass components inside this design aren't really going to become damaged, from that acid, as the water in here evaporates, it will become more concentrated and the next time you make a measurement, it will use this acid as part of the measurement and you might get a bad reading. So you want to get some distilled water, which you should always have on hand for your batteries for keeping them full. And just like with the batteries, squeeze the bulb, draw up a whole bulb of water, of distilled water, Okay, kind of swish it around a little bit, make sure everything gets good and rinsed, and squirt it out. Do not put this back in your distilled water because you will slowly acidify your distilled water. You want to do the same thing with your HydroVolt if you're using one. This is even more important. The components in here are made of plastic, and while of course they're designed to be in the environment of the acid, they're not designed to be there for long periods of time. So make sure you draw up a whole bulb of distilled water into your hydrovolt, give it a swish, and squirt it out. Make sure you get it all out of there as well. So once you've completed the measurement and the cleaning of your tools, pack it up, you're done. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe so you can get more great videos just like this one. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and at our blog at blog.theratracelosers.com. And as always, thanks for watching.